Welcome to module three of the core comprehensive counseling program, which is where we move past our foundational work and our annual update and move on to action. Up to this point, you've created a foundational document that details your school counseling program's beliefs, vision, and mission, summarizes the services you offer, and lists the broad standards that you want your students to master. It's your rock. It's the document that says your school counseling program has a solid foundation, that it's a vital and important part of the total school environment. And though you'll want to review your foundational document each year, it's fairly solid and consistent year to year. Then you created your annual update, a summary of what the counseling office looks like this year, who you are, who you serve, where counselors spend their time, and what you do. And probably most importantly, you also reviewed the most recent and available student achievement attendance or behavior data, maybe even your student success needs assessment data, and then pinpointed two or three priority student needs that you then converted into student outcome goals. Your annual update is not a list of every good thing you're planning to do this year, but it puts the spotlight on a handful of key priority focus areas that you hope to impact the school year. Well, now the first step in module three is to go to step A2 and pull up your student outcome goals report. This summary document shows you your two or three student outcome goals, the text of your SMART goals, a table listing some possible root causes that you identified on the left, and some possible strategies to address the root causes on the right. This is just a reminder that your strategies on the right side are going to become your student learning objectives in your lesson plans. Your lesson plans will help students learn new information or new skills or develop a new mindset in order to address the root causes on the left that we hope will ultimately result in improved data outcomes in your SMART goal. Normally, I would print this document for your next steps, but you don't really need to because very soon you'll see the same information as we begin making your lesson plans. To begin creating lesson plans, click on the pencil icon in To Do Item A3, Create Classroom, Large Group, and Small Group Lesson Plans. Then click on Add a Lesson Plan or Unit, and that opens this handy dandy lesson maker process. You'll start at part one to select the SMART goal you want to work on first. Then be sure in each of these steps to click where it says this section is complete so you can go on to the next step. In part two, you'll see your selected SMART goal plus that cool table of root causes and strategies, which allows you to begin writing the learning objectives for this goal. We give you a sentence stem that starts with students will, so you can fill it in with students will learn or do or experience or believe, et cetera, as a result of your classroom lesson. Remember, these will eventually become your pre and post-test questions. We suggest you click add another learning objective for each one of the learning objectives you create instead of creating one big bulleted list within each box. So go ahead and write at least two or three learning objectives if you can. Remember, each one in a separate box and then click this section is complete and you can go on to part three. In part three, it lets you select if you want your pre and post test questions to be based on a Likert scale measure. Likert meaning those things that go from strongly agree to strongly disagree, or if you prefer, that would be an open-ended question item as well. So you get to choose. You can even do both. Likert scale questions are much easier when it comes to scoring, but using one or the other, or sometimes both, is really up to you. And you get to choose how many Likert scale responses you want, from three to five responses, and what wording you'll use for the Likert scale, such as strongly agree to strongly disagree, very important and not important, et cetera. In part four, simply distinguish between whether your lesson plan is a single standalone lesson plan or a series of lessons in one unit. If you choose a unit, you'll see this text box, which reminds you that a unit must have at least two lesson plans to be considered a unit. We'll come back and show you how to create a unit in just a few minutes with multiple lesson plans but for now, we'll continue looking at a standalone lesson. We'll click on this section is complete and go on to part five. In part five, you will be asked to add in some details about your standalone lesson, including the lesson title, who will deliver the lesson, which can include the name of someone you have already entered or go to the bottom of the drop down box and click on someone not listed here to add the name of an additional individual, like a teacher, for example. Next, add in the expected grade level or levels of your target audience, how many students you predict will be receiving your lesson, 
Again, that's probably just a guess, and that's fine. And the approximate planned length of your standalone lesson. Once you're done, make sure to click This section is complete in part five, and you'll jump to part six, which allows you to add even more detail to each lesson plan in your unit, including any materials you will need. Feel free to type none if you don't have any. How you will introduce the lesson, including some of the actual wording you may want to use to start the lesson. Then list out in bullets or numbers each step of how you will teach the lesson content, including any activities you want to do. And finally, your wording for how you plan to summarize or close the lesson. Now, at first, you may feel this amount of detailed information is too much and just not needed. But think of it this way, as a set of details or instructions that you could pass on to anyone so that they could teach the lesson if you weren't available. Or if you're like me, the details help you remember from year to year how you taught the lesson the year before. So we urge you to take the time to provide as many details as possible. The last step in the development of your lesson plan is to associate your lesson to one or two student standards. Your student standards are the mindsets and behaviors you chose to use back in module two, or another set of student standards that you developed, or some combination of both. Associate this particular lesson with up to just two standards. It may be correlated to many more, but just choose two. Now, what you've done so far allows your school counseling lesson plans to be standards-based, just as the math teacher's lessons or science teacher's lessons are standards-based. Having standards resonates with principals and school leaders, so it's good to make this final connection. Once you click This Section is Complete in Part 7, you'll have a final option to publish your lesson plans, which simply means you give us permission to share your lesson plans with anyone else using CORE who's working to address a similar goal as yours or a similar set of student standards. This just helps us build a core community of practice, but it's completely fine if you choose not to share your lesson plan. If so, just leave this section blank. The decision, again, is totally yours. Well, now that you have finished all of these steps, you can print and or save your lesson plan if you would like, and you are done. Even though we took some time to walk slowly through each of these steps, this process actually speeds along fairly quickly once you get it down. Now, before we leave, let's jump back up briefly to part four and explore what you would do if you choose to create a unit instead of a standalone lesson. A unit, remember, includes two or more lessons. When you develop a unit, you complete the same first three parts of the lesson planning process, just as you do for a standalone lesson, part one, part two, and part three. That's because all of the lessons in your unit, even if delivered on different days, address the same SMART goal, the same learning objectives, and will use the same pre- and post-test questions. So remember, this is important, when you're using a unit of lessons, you only give the post-test after you have taught all of the lessons in your unit. Likewise, all of the lesson plans in your unit will be correlated to one set of student standards, which you will identify in part six. For now, all you need to do in part four is select unit, then go to part five to name your unit, and just as you did for a standalone lesson, select the appropriate grade levels, predict how many students will complete the lesson, and then estimate the length of the lesson. Click on this section is complete to go on to part six to select up to two of your student standards that align with this unit. Remember that these standards will apply to all of the lesson plans in the entire unit. Now it's time to add in the details of each lesson in your unit, which you do by first clicking on the pencil icon in the handy table labeled Lesson Plans, just below part six. Clicking on the pencil icon next to lesson one, for example, takes you to the lesson one details page with five parts. Note that parts one, two, and three are already done because your goal, what students will learn and your pre post test questions were already established earlier for the entire unit. All you need to do is click on part four and just like you did with one standalone lesson, add lesson one title, who will deliver the lesson, Note that you've already identified the target audience grade level, anticipated number of students, and planned length of the lesson. All of this is pre-populated for you, which we think is pretty handy. So part four moves quickly. Once you click this section is complete, go on to part five, where you'll add more details about lesson one in your unit, including any materials, how you plan to introduce the lesson, teach the lesson, wrap up the lesson. And once you've done that for lesson one, go back to the lesson plans table, and you'll do the same process for each of the additional lessons, lessons two, lesson three, and so on. And that is how you enter information about units and standalone lessons. 
But this time, our online learning platform does not give you a way to upload an existing lesson plan or add one that you've purchased through an evidence-based program like Second Step, for example. But you can type in the information for the lesson plan yourself or add a link to an online version of the lesson. Just make sure if it's a copyrighted lesson that you give appropriate attribution to the appropriate group. Well, remember that though this process sounds a little bit complicated at first, it really does get easier as you work through it. And if you get stuck or lost along the way, just contact us by clicking on the purple button titled support, and we'll be happy to help you out.